Guys, sometimes don't worry about what the critics are saying and just go in and decide for yourself what you think of a movie. Hey everybody, this is David and today I am here to talk about Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. And I was lucky enough to be invited by IMAX, thank you IMAX, for inviting me to see this movie two days earlier than I was originally going to see. So this is really cool. And uh, yeah, so this is kind of like an, er this is my first early review for a movie, right? Okay, so other reviews have been coming out since Tuesday, yesterday. But uh, my, hey, mine is, isn't too far behind and mine is before yours. So there you go. And uh, so yeah, here I am and I'm about to talk about the movie that has been my m number one most anticipated of 2016. <laughs> Probably my most anticipated of life. So let's get through this. What did I think of it? First of all, the man of the hour himself, Ben Affleck as Batman is terrific. You will not be disappointed by Ben Affleck as Batman. He is totally my favorite Batman right now. That's right. He tops Christian Bale. He tops Michael Keaton. He tops Val Kilmer. Everyone tops George Clooney. So there was really no competition there. And Ben Affleck blows it out of the water. You believe that he is Batman. And he's not just your you know, ordinary Batman like we've seen before. This is a Batman that's on the edge. And he will go close to the edge if he has to beat someone up to, you know, strike fear into them. Henry Cavill is back and he's really good back in the role as Superman. And, you know, I love Henry Cavill. I think the guy's an awesome actor. He gets a lot more to do in this movie. I, I like his chemistry with Amy Adams. And, you know, their, their chemistry actually seemed to blossom a little bit more in this movie than it did in Man of Steel. So that's a really good positive thing to say. I also have to say Gal Gadot, you know. Gal Gadot isn't the strongest actress in this movie. Uh, maybe the weakest actress by comparison to all the other actors in the film. But I will say that I thought her character, the way it was handled, was really well done. And I thought Wonder Woman, especially at the end of the movie, when you get to the end of the movie, you will see this Amazon. The Amazon is unleashed and she kicks major ass. Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor is kind of maybe a hit or miss for a lot of people. For me, I was expecting it to be a lot worse. <laughs> but I'm thankful to say that it wasn't as bad as I was expecting. Maybe because I was kind of warned that his car his performance was a little cartoony. And yeah, even though in some areas I wish they would have toned him down, I, I uh, didn't mind it all too much. But yeah, this is not the Lex that I really wanted to see. I would have preferred like a Michael Rosenbaum style Lex Luthor from Smallville. That would have been a better Lex Luthor in my opinion. You know it's kind of sad when Gene Hackman felt more real than Jesse Eisenberg right now. As for the rest of the supporting cast, yes, they're all great as usual. These are top-notch actors that are in the, these supporting roles like Lawrence Fishburne and Diane Lane, as well as Jeremy Irons as Alfred. Probably one of the best supporting actors in this movie, in my opinion. I definitely like Alfred and Bruce's moments together, uh, their interaction together. Feels very much like the animated series of Batman, where you get that... Alfred that's kind of witty and smart, you know, he he, does, he knows that Bruce is this type of character, but he's not afraid to throw a few jokes here and there towards him. The special effects are really cool, you know, something that Zack Snyder has always been good with is special effects and visuals, you know, there are a lot of really cool visuals in this film, and the action sequences are really good too. I really like the action sequences with Batman because this is actually probably the best interpretation of Batman in action that we have gotten. Now with all that being said, that doesn't mean the movie is perfect. I mean the movie does have its problems and some of the problems is the story feels a little wonky at times and what I mean by that it feels like there's some scenes that were in there that didn't need to be in there and kind of dragged the movie a little bit. Mostly in the beginning, I feel the movie was kind of going at a little bit of a slow pace. I did feel like towards the end, obviously, it started picking up maybe halfway through, 
but uh, it's it's not too slow. And there are moments in the beginning still where, okay, this is interesting. This is what I want to see. I want to see this go in this direction. But sometimes it doesn't go in the direction you think it's going. And I was also kind of disappointed in the look of Doomsday. I felt his look felt like if you were disappointed by it in the trailer, everybody knows Doomsday is in the trailer. This is not a spoiler. But if you were disappointed by that look in the trailer, uh, yeah, you're not going to be happy with this look. As a matter of fact, I think I was even more disappointed with the look, uh, especially with the fact that uh, this is not really a spoiler. I don't think so. I mean, unless you really care. Doomsday doesn't have pants. Yeah, he, he goes nude. I mean, like, he doesn't even have a dick, so... If you thought the thing in Fantastic Four was bad... Yeah. For what it's worth, though, I am giving this movie an 8 out of 10. I really enjoyed it, guys. I, I had no bad things to say about... It. Well, okay, I did have bad things to say about it, but it, I mean... I, maybe it was because my expectations were lowered since the reviews had come out yesterday. But for me, I didn't think it was as bad as people made it out to be. I mean, yeah, it's flawed. It has some flaws. I probably even liked Man of Steel a little bit more than this. But for what it's worth, I think it's still a good film for DC fans to check out. Let's put it this way. If you were a fan of Man of Steel, I think you will enjoy this movie. Uh, maybe not as much as Man of Steel. Like me, I think I put Man of Steel above this. I think in terms of quality and all that and the way that story flowed, I felt the focus on Kal-El, Superman, in that movie was spot on. Well, in this movie, it seems like the focus is kind of... Maybe because Batman and Superman are both there, maybe Snyder didn't know how to focus it well on both of them. And with that, I mean, we also have a lot of Justice League Easter eggs setting up for things to come. And I'm going to admit, I think a lot of the Easter eggs felt kind of forced. And I won't spoil what they are. You'll know them when you see them. One thing that I do think that Warner Brothers might need to fix is maybe get rid of Snyder. Because maybe his style isn't for everyone. And if they can replace him... Maybe that will be better for the Justice League movie and give people more confidence in that one. But if you do like, you know, the dark tone that Snyder has done, then yes, for sure, support this film. Because it does get me excited for what's to come in DC's cinematic universe. So, until next time, guys, I'm ending it here. Subscribe to my channel, like this video, and take care.